Alright guys, I am down here in my snake room cleaning up some tubs and I thought for this episode I'd highlight my uh, moss balls that I use in my tubs for humidity and I, I just kind of basically made it up out of necessity and it's, it's really, uh, I think it's one of the better um, options I think for keeping humidity in a tub that I've seen so far. And I'm always kind of looking for like the next best thing, looking for a uh, better substrate, uh, a better way to keep my, my snakes. And so far this has been working really well. And let me show you kind of what I have. So this is kind of my, my current setup that I've kind of settled on here. Uh, so basically what I just use is I've just been using paper towels. Uh, I actually used to do Aspen and then I switched to like a Pro Cocoa or a Repta Chip, the, the coconut husk chips. And uh, the, thing I, the thing I really don't like about the, the coconut husk chips is um, uh, I found that it, it kind of gets in their mouth sometimes when they're feeding. And, and basically what happens is the snakes kind of burrow into it and they end up just sitting right on a bare plastic tub anyways. <laughs> and then you, you kind of neglect it and, and, and it gets dry and, and really dusty, which I don't like. And uh, uh, some have more or less dust. <laughs> Where is that guy going? And uh, uh, the other thing I don't, don't like about it is uh, it's really bulky. So... So I was for all these tubs for my for my whole snake room. I was probably going through, um, I'd say like seven or eight, uh, thirty nine gallon bags of <laughs> coconut husk. And I'm sure with all my hatchlings, I go through through even even more. And with the paper towel, it doesn't take a whole lot of room uh, to to dispose of it and to get rid of it and to, to kind of to to manage it. So the problem is if you go with a paper substrate, then basically you have a humidity problem. And that's always been the problem. So I really like the paper substrate just because it's cheap, it's easy to clean. Uh, it, it doesn't take a lot of room in the tub. So if you have a really big snake that coils the rat, then, uh, <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> then my problem was is with a big snake full of, and when he coils the rat and it's full of coconut husk, um, then uh, uh, a lot of times I had to have problems closing the tub and uh, <laughs> I don't want them to go through there and it seemed like ever since I went with a paper substrate uh, my uh, uh, it seems like my snakes have a lot more room in the tub it's, I was actually surprised because I went with the the coconut husk bedding for a long time and then when I switched back to paper, <laughs> well I started with paper, then I actually went back to paper, and uh, I was actually surprised. It seems like the tubs are twice or even three times as big. Uh, so, so that's one thing I really like. And to, to get, get around the humidity problem, I started using these little moss balls, and I just kind of came up with the idea. So basically what it is, <laughs> basically it's just sphagnum moss and I put it in in netting um, that, I, that I bought on the internet and I found this netting, it's, it's basically um, for vegetables and I know I've showed this in my videos before but the problem is I haven't really highlighted it in the video and uh, people, you know, ask me, you know, where do you show how to make the the, <laughs> the sphagnum moss balls? It's like, I don't know, somewhere in, in my 150 videos back there somewhere. So I thought I'd kind of highlight uh, just the, the moss balls, how I make them, and kind of how I uh, got to the point where um, I, I felt that I needed them. And it's been working really good. And a lot of people say that they are actually going to start going to, to the moss balls, which is pretty cool. Maybe I'll start a trend. <laughs> so, so basically what I do uh, is I get this sphagnum moss, and it comes in a big block, almost like a reptichip block. And this is kind of just a partial of a block. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of take a gallon of water, and... Uh, I won't use a whole gallon, I'll just use some, and depending on how much I need. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of mix it around by hand until it, it soaks up some water. 
And then uh, let me set this camera up on a tripod and I'll basically show you how I make the balls. Okay, so these, uh, the, the netting is actually on one end, it's actually fused together. It's almost like it's melted together. <laughs> and then the other end is open. And what I do is I just put a little, uh, kind of squeeze out the water. You can squeeze it out before, you can squeeze it out kind of at the end. And so what I do is I just fill it up. And the size of the ball depends on the size of the snake and the size of the tub. So I usually use maybe a little bit smaller for hatchlings and maybe this size for a full-size snake. And, and you, can, you can make them as big as you want, really. It's, uh, it's pretty much up to you. And then what I do is I basically make a double knot. And that way, I can make two balls out of the same, the same thing here. And I can make a bigger ball or a smaller ball. And I want to make some, some pretty big ones this time for some of my bigger snake tubs. And I'd say for my hatchlings, I probably use uh, um, about half the size, I'd say. So that's basically it right there. And then... I'll just cut them in the middle, cut the end off, <laughs> throw this little end away, and that's basically it for two balls right there. And I, I found that, um, you know, at first when I first started using them, they'd kind of pee on the ball a little bit, they get a little bit soiled, and uh, if you smell them it smells kind of bad, but I found that it washes out really well, you only have to rinse it, just kind of squeeze it under water a couple times and all the smells come out and I've, I've been using these for probably uh, at least over a year and I haven't found any that have molded or have smelled like mildew or anything they, they just basically smell like moss <laughs> so these are really I think they'll last a long time and uh, they've been really working good for me so what I do is actually if I have extra balls, moss balls, I'll just kind of put them in this tub with, with extra, <laughs> a bunch of extras here. And if someone's going through a shed, I'll grab a few extras. And uh, uh, if they, if they kind of get soiled to the point where it's, you know, really, really bad, I'll just toss them out. And, and I'd say, uh, I'd say a block of sphagnum moss. Uh, I get them on Amazon, the real high quality stuff, and I'd say it costs probably about $25. And I can make probably 50 balls, big ones with that. So um, I'd say it's about 50 cents a piece. And then and then these this netting, I think I paid $10 for 100 of the netting. And that's, and that's really cheap. And the other thing with this moss and that netting is, if you notice in this tub here, uh, some of the some of the uh, moss kind of comes through, <laughs> uh, especially when they're dry. They kind of uh, it comes through the the netting and kind of makes a mess in here. And it's it's really not that big of a deal. Um, it makes a little bit of a mess, uh, but not a whole lot. I, I thought about going to like a nylon or something like that, um, but. Um, so far this has been working really well. The only problem I've had with these moss balls is uh, let me get this stuff back in, is with my little king snakes and my Arizona mountain uh, male uh, snake. Here let me pull this, this snake out here. So oh let's see <laughs> if I can get him down. So this little guy here <laughs> Whew, he is quick today. I think I kind of freaked him out. <laughs> but basically what happened with this guy is uh, I had a moss ball in there and he actually burrowed through the moss ball and got stuck halfway through. And basically <laughs> he was like in one side of the moss ball and out and, and his head was sticking out like maybe two inches and he couldn't get out. And what happened was um, by the time I saw him, his body started swelling a little bit, and uh, he kind of got even worse in there. And <laughs> I took a good bite trying to get him out of there, but uh, uh, and he actually has a tiny little sore right about here, 
And it happened about two weeks ago, I'd say, and he's on the recovery. He'll, he should heal up fine. But that's just one thing uh, with these these smaller snakes, like the king snakes uh, uh, and the Arizona mountain snakes. Um, uh, I would definitely keep moss balls out of those. So even I'd say even with the the California king snakes, I would I would take the moss balls out. They've been working really well for the ball pythons. Uh, my retics are big enough to where I don't think it's an issue. Maybe small retics that tend to, uh, if they can kind of push their head through, uh, I might keep it out of uh, some small retic cages. You know, but I think for my big retics it'd be okay. But you just have to, I would say the, they're more, mainly geared towards ball pythons because ball pythons aren't that type of a snake to where they'll kind of burrow through anything like that. So I kind of wanted to show you how I set up my the moss balls in my hatchling tubs. And if you watched my videos before, I'm sure you've seen this, but um, if you're just looking at it for the first time, <laughs> this is basically how I have it set up. And all basically all I do is take the hatchling, move it to a new tub with a new paper towel. Uh, and typically I use a new cup. And uh, generally I wash my... my jelly cups just to kind of um, save the landfills and save on costs and basically then I just use a tiny little uh, moss ball in these and what I do for these is I just kind of give it a little little soak in here and it doesn't take long to hydrate it and then I just kind of squeeze it out and then just kind of throw it in and wh what I used to do is put them kind of up here in the front but the problem with that is, is the snakes kind of tend to hang out on top of the moss ball. And I'd rather kind of have the snakes behind the water cup when I open up the tub. Especially when I'm feeding them. And then they kind of <laughs> they kind of stick their head up here and they wrap the, uh, the rodent up here instead of kind of jumping out of the tub when I feed them. It's just more of a, a kind of for feeding that's kind of where I, where I keep them. But that's basically it for the... For the hatchling tub, it's I mean it's it's a real easy setup, real easy to change the bedding, and uh, it's been working really well for so me. So one more thing about the moss, you can get cheaper moss, and I've actually bought more inexpensive moss. But the problem is, is there's a lot of sticks in it, <laughs> and then when you're kind of squeezing out the moss ball, all these sticks kind of poke you in the hand, and then uh, I mean if, if if you're really looking for some low cost sphagna moss you can buy some you just kind of have to the first time you wet it you just kind of have to go through it and pull all the sticks out and the stems and everything and uh the high quality stuff i think it's it's really kind of hand sorted and i think that's why it costs a little bit more so that's basically it with the moss balls <laughs> and uh, i'm going to leave you with one more little video clip of an animal that walked up to my the back of the house yeah, it's a wild animal came right up to me. It's really awesome. I think you really like that video. <laughs> so thanks for watching and I will see you next time.